So what we're now going to do is look at an example of E, B and F. And so what we have here is we have three components, digit, number and sign, are defined here by the E, B and F. So digit is, a uh, is either a 0 or a 1 or a 2 all the way up to 9. And so that's what the digit is defined as. A number is a single digit, which is 0 to 9, to followed by 0 or more other digits. And a sign is either plus or negative. So this E, B, and F symbols we have is equals, which is defined as. We have the OR. We have the brackets, which is something previously def defined, such as digit. And we have the curly bracket, zero or more repetition. So what we're now going to do is look at which of these four um, numbers and symbols is actually syntactically correct in regards to what we have def been def what we have defined. So 45. The 4 is a digit which can be part of a number, which is correct. That's followed by a 5, which is actually another digit. Therefore, 45 is actually defined as a number, which is correct. Then we have 3.4. Now, 3 is a digit, which is correct. And it's followed by a dot or decimal. Now, when we look up the top, a decimal is actually not defined anywhere. So a number is not defined to have a decimal. Therefore, that is syntactically incorrect. So we'll get a syntax error. Then we have 2. And 2 is either a digit or, an, or it can be a number. So that's syntactically correct. And lastly, we have the plus sign, which is actually a sign. So out of those four, three are syntactically correct and the 3.4 would give a syntax error. Now, what we want to do is define fr from what we've already defined, which is digit, number, and sign, we want to now define what an integer is. Now, an integer is a whole number. That whole number can be like 88, or it can contain in front of it an optional negative or positive. So we now want to define that. So another example is we could have 88, 887, or we could just have 7. So any sequence of digits. So an integer is defined to have a possible sign at the front of it. So if we write the sign. Now, because it's previously been defined, you put in those sharp brackets. Now, it's optional. You either have or you don't. So we have to put around it those square brackets which make sign optional. And that then is going to be followed by a number. So the number is defined previously as well, so again those sharp brackets. So what we have now is an integer is a sign, or we don't have it, followed by a number. Now what we want to do is to find another type of number which is a real. Now a real has all the same types of numbers integer, but it also can have decimals. So in this case, you have a number such as 8, followed by a decimal, followed by another number. So we have to define that. So a real is defined to have, again like the integer, a possible sign at the front. And that sign is either a plus or minus. And because, again, it's optional, we put the square brackets around it. Now, we have to follow that by a number. So, number is already previously defined. So, we have here an example where we either have a number like 88 is correct, or we have minus 88 would also be correct. Now, if we want to add a decimal or number after it, we have to now put it a dot and put that in quotes and follow that by another number. Now, what we have now is we say an optional sign, followed by a number, followed by a decimal and another number. Now, the trouble is the second decimal and number are optional. So what we have to do is put the option brackets in to show that you either have that or you don't. So there we have a real defined. With a sign, optional, it has to have a number, then followed by an optional decimal and number. 
what we're now going to look at is railway diagrams. So railway diagrams are the same as E, B and F, but they use diagrams to represent the syntax. So the square box is the same as having the sharp brackets, and the circle is the same as putting things in quotes or leaving out. So if you have the if which is defined, you'd put that in a circle. So you're looking for those two symbols. And the last one is to have a path. And this is where we can define options. So we might have an option of one or two. And you, what you're saying is you can either do one or you can do, do two. Or it's used to define loops. So if we have one again, I can have one. If I want that looping around, I put a loop in there. In this case, I'd have one or multiple versions of one. So they're the symbols that's made up of those. What we now want to do is look at an example of railway diagrams. So what we have here is we have a digit, which is defined as 1 through to 9, and a number, which is defined as a digit, followed by another digit. Now, this actually is incorrect, what I've got here. It's actually a digit, not but with another one up there, but simply followed by another digit. So a number is a digit, and you've got more, you have another digit. So what I had done there was an error. What we now want to do is assign. And that's going to be an optional either plus or a negative. So what we're doing is we're having a pathway of either plus or negative. We now want to define integer, which is the same as what we had before. So either you have no sign in the front or you have a sign. So we have another pathway to either do the sign or not do the sign. And that then is followed by a number. So numbers previously be defined so it's in the square box. And so what we have now is we have an integer is either no sign or a sign followed by a number. 